Welcome to another episode of Unboxing with Paul. And today, I bring you the Rebel V Plus 5G. Another attempt to bring 5G more accessible. Let's take a look at it. So released in July of 2021, again, this phone comes at a crucial time in which 5G is being made more widely available for everybody, where 5G becomes the norm among users. Now, this phone retails for $199.99, and as you guys can see, there's a bunch of T-Mobile um, branding on it because this is T-Mobile's in-house brand. Um, but before we continue any further, let's just go ahead and take a second to appreciate this very, very good packaging. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't cost too much to put out a little bit of, you know, extra money, a little bit of extra effort into packaging and the consumer definitely appreciates it. We're going to go ahead and put the phone aside for right now and we're going to go ahead and continue viewing the contents of our box. So we're going to put that aside and it looks like in here, we're going to get the typical legal and safety, as well as a SIM injector tool. It looks to be one of those cheap twisted wire ones. Continuing right along, we also got uh, this time around a black USB-C to USB-A cord. Uh, just like the previous ones, this one is also braided cloth, um, but it is black instead of it being white. And just like that, we also got a wall adapter. Now, this was T-Mobile's wall adapter, and I believe this is a 15-watt wall adapter. I know it said 18 watts on the box, but it says it's only rated for 15 down here. Um, let's go ahead and continue. I think that is it for the contents of our box. We're going to put those back in here. I'll put this aside and we're going to go ahead and continue looking at the rest of our phone. Now, the phone itself is a beautiful square flat slab of glass and plastic that T-Mobile is calling Nebula Black. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that in the light, but again, it is black on the sides with a uh, pink stripe point on the middle. And it looks different depending on what color, on what angle you are looking at it from. It's still nonetheless a very, very nice device. And since we're back here, let's go ahead and take a look at our camera array with a triple lens setup, excuse me. And it looks like we have a 16 megapixel main, a five megapixel ultra wide, and all the way at the bottom is gonna be a two megapixel either depth or macro camera. Unfortunately, I was not able to confirm, followed by the LED flash. Now, again, as I said before, this is a beautiful slab of square plastic and glass. We are rocking a 6.82 720 by 1640 IPS display with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So, again, definitely, definitely a long way here. Uh, this is not short and chunky by any means. And inside, we are rocking 64 gigabytes of storage with 4 gigabytes of RAM. 
And our processor is again that typical uh, 5G processor in which we have uh, six efficiency cores and two power cores. Now, six of those efficiency cores are gonna be clocked in right around 2.0 gigahertz for those lighter day-to-day -day tasks to you know, keep your phone uh, cool, to be able to preserve its battery so it's not draining your resources. And then finally, two of those other cores are gonna be clocked in at 2.2 gigahertz for those heavier, more power intensive tasks. Now, as far as communications go, again, the big thing on this phone is 5G. This is meant to bring 5G to the masses. And again, at $199.99, that makes it pretty, pretty accessible. Well, let's go ahead and turn over um, the phone and let's go ahead and take a look at it. As we can see on the very left side of the phone, we have our volume down and volume up buttons. Um, I'm a huge fan of the fact that there's actually a little minus sign. Um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. There we go, there's a little minus and a little plus sign. Very, very nice attention to detail. Now, right with that, we also have our SIM forward slash SD card tray. At the very top of the phone, it looks like they've kept it fairly clean with only a pinhole microphone up here. And obviously our earpiece that is also very, very nicely integrated. It is very, very um, hard to see for the most part, unless you're really looking at it. And then over on the right side of the phone, we have an, again, a very, very nice clean look, except for the power button, which is very nice and flush. Again, I'm not sure how well that can be conveyed, but it is just a very, very nice and flat device. I'm a huge, huge fan. And of course, at the very bottom of the phone, we have our speaker, our USB-C 2.0 for charging and data transfer, one more pinhole microphone, and a headphone jack that is always very, very nice to have, just in case your Bluetooth headphones die, or just in case you like to plug your headphones right in. Once we get inside the phone, it looks to be a fairly um, basic looking phone. Um, we don't see too many bloatware again, we just see the normal apps, the assistant calculator, camera, Chrome, files, phone, Play Store, YouTube, uh, nothing really too extra in here, which actually I'm uh, I'm happy to see for a change. I'm, I'm glad that there's no bloatware in here, uh, but on the same token, I'm afraid that maybe the user interface might be a little um, rough around the edges they may not have put as much time as they should have into this um we're gonna see so it's gonna install a system update hopefully that's gonna improve longevity and fix any system issues that we may be having and i wasn't sure but i have in fact confirmed that the power button also doubles as a fingerprint scanner uh, which is a very very nice touch and again i'm a huge huge fan of the fact that again it's such a such a flat, such a uh, seamless integration of the power button. Again, all you have to do is just lift, tap, lift, tap, getting your thumb acquainted with different areas of the power button forward slash fingerprint reader. Again, it's a very, very easy, very simple process to get your phone, uh, to get your finger acquainted with the power button. Once it's already been added, you go out, lock the phone, you touch it, and it locks. And actually. That's pretty quick. That's really quick. That's really quick. Okay, well, I'm impressed with that. Looking at the front, our selfie camera is only a 16 megapixel lens that is only able to afford us a 1080p video at 30 frames per second. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and test out this camera. And we're gonna go ahead and see uh, for our video mode. Let's go and try it out. This is what video looks and sounds like on the main camera of the Rebel V Plus 5G. Okay. And we can also zoom out. So again, there was a, there's a, kind of hard to see, but there's, I guess, a regular field of view like that. And I guess we can zoom out for an ultra wide. So yeah, it definitely does give us more um, a wider view and angle. And then let's go ahead and see what our selfie camera is going to look like. Looks all right, it's on video. So then this is what the selfie camera looks like on the Rebel V Plus 5G. Uh, fairly basic camera, does it have tap to focus? Mm, I mean, it's all right. It's looking a little bit washed out because of all the lighting here. Or is it trying to do a filter? Is it trying to do a filter? No, no, we're not trying to do a filter. Okay, good. So then that's it. Oh, that's not terrible. That's not. 
the end of the world. I've seen worse. Definitely seen worse. There's that. So that was video on the selfie camera of the Rovi V plus 5G. And again, we can always adjust for um, aspect ratios. Uh, let's see what else we can adjust. So let us mess with it. Um, photo. Let's see what it loves to mess with. I wasn't aware that this thing could do 60 frames per second. Earlier today when I was looking at the specs, it said it could only do 30 frames per second. Oh, okay, well, there we go. So 60 frames per second is locked to a 1440 by 1440 or a 1920 by 1080p. So that makes sense. You can't do 4K 60 frames per second, right? You can do uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is all right. I'm, I'm impressed. That's much better than I thought. But I mean, as far as the normal picture goes, let's see uh, if we can take a halfway decent picture. Um, again, that's not terrible. That is not, that's not terrible though. That's not terrible. Here, it's a full on picture. A little washed out. Tap the phone. Oh, this is long. This is a long phone. Yeah, no, 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 no beauty. No beauty filters. Zero. Why are you trying to give me a beauty filter? No, no tone. None. There we go. And then. That's a selfie, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put those up. Terrible, terrible. I mean, I'm terrible at taking pictures, but yeah, that's not that's not half bad, man. I I've definitely seen worse. That's definitely not the worst I've ever seen on a device. Uh, let's go ahead and see how this phone performs at normal video playback. So then, this is what uh, it would look like with normal video playback on YouTube. It's um it's fairly crisp, it's fairly good. I'm not really encountering any issues. Um, if anything, maybe the viewing angles are possibly not the best, but the volume seems adequate. I don't know how, but they've managed to remove the tinniness of uh, that is typical of small size speakers, and it actually sounds. Decent again for what it is. I've heard worse sounding phones. They usually sound pretty tinny, really tinny, really small. And they somehow got rid of that on this one and I'm, I'm a fan. Again, there's no hi-fi sound here. It's not amazing, but better than most. And again, this being such a super long, long boy, those movies are gonna look amazing on this. Or if you have like a, a, you know, a, a game that supports that 20 by nine aspect ratio, you're really, really going to get to enjoy the screen. And again, you guys know I just can't wrap up the video without running Geekbench for you. Um, we are running those eight cores, six of those being clocked in at 2.0 gigahertz for those slider day-to-day -day tasks, and then the other two cores being clocked in at 2.2 gigahertz for those heavier, more power-intensive tasks. And we're going to see just how power-intensive and just how good those are. And we will be right back with you guys as soon as this is over. Okay, guys, and we are back. That was actually a lot quicker than I thought. And uh, before I show you the results, let's just uh, really quick recap on what we got on the OnePlus N200. The Geekbench single core score for that one was a 495 on the single core, and the multi score was a 1483 for the OnePlus N200. Now, let's go ahead and see our results for this phone, which were. A 522 on the single score and a, what is it, a 1361 on the multi core. So, eh, technically, this one uh, underperformed. It is $20 cheaper than the OnePlus N200. Uh, however, let's go ahead and see how we stack up against other phones. Again, we got our 522 on the single core. Again, half the performance of the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Uh, for a quarter of the price, not bad in my opinion. Again, we're more something like uh, Galaxy A71. We're doing better than that. Uh, we're somewhere right around the Xiaomi Poco X3 NFC. And for the multi-score, again, we're at 1361. Again, eh, about a little less than half of the performance on the multi-score on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. We're more like uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 7. We're way below a Galaxy A71. But again, about half of the performance for a quarter of the cost. Not, a, you know, not bad in my opinion. The phone did get a little toasty, they get a little bit warm, but that's just normal, that is expected as the phone was doing work. 
Um, and right before we wrap up, guys, I did forget to mention completely um, our communications in here. Besides, again, this phone being 5G, we do have NFC in here. We also have Bluetooth 5.0. We have dual band Wi-Fi AC. And what else could you want? Do like NFC and 5G in a $200 package? That's pretty flipping good. I'm also gonna try to run um, the 5G download speed for you guys, but it's gonna have to be in a separate video as I do not have time to cover it today. So as this is a 5G device, it should be getting 5G speeds. Although we are currently on 3G, I do not know why that is. Uh, I want to experience what these download speeds are like on a normal, regular basis. I don't want the ideal situation. I don't want the ideal um, scenario to happen, you know, because uh, ideal situations are never gonna happen in daily life. I wanna see what this is like on a normal, um, Connection, it looks like we got 4.4 mega, megabits per uh, second on download. That is really, really bad. Uh, let's go ahead and see if um, we can stay on 5G. It says we're on 5G automatically. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Again, this is 5G being made available uh, for the masses. Uh, I expect to see, you know, uh, yeah, there we go. That's more like it. You know, meanwhile, this isn't the advertised what was like 80 megabits per second or, you know, um, this is so considerably, considerably faster than what we saw earlier, uh, potentially almost 10 times faster, I want to say, as we had a, what is it, a 4 point something, we have a 3.4. So just about 9 and 10 times faster. Uh, our ping seems to be right about the same at 42 mil uh, milliseconds, but that's not bad. That's not half bad at all, again, considering that... This is a starter device. This is $199.99. This is NFC, 64 gigs of storage, which is 5.0 and 5G, and a, now what is it, a 19 by nine aspect ratio? Sorry, 20 by nine aspect ratio. All for $199.99. Uh, I wanna see consistent speeds of that LA, there we go. I wanna see consistent 30 plus megabit. There we go, 42, 45, 43. There we go, that's what I'm talking about, consistent 40, 50 megabit per second download speeds. That is what 5G is all. Oh my God, it got to 50. Okay, so that's pretty good. I guess that you can expect to see 50 megabit per second down, you know, or even 40 megabit per second download speeds on a consistent basis. Let's run it again one more time, test again. Um, I, I really, really want to find those, um, those consistent speeds. I want to make sure that this is something that, that you get all the time, not just something that you can recreate in a lab under ideal conditions, because again, under ideal conditions, I would be a millionaire. I would be financially responsible. I would have had my own business under ideal conditions. I would have had a lot of stuff done, but the world doesn't often go uh, according to plan and there's a bunch of other stuff that can get in the way. And that's what we're testing here. Normal day-to-day -day life. Uh, let's see how well it goes. And again, we got uh, 37 megabits per second. I'm pretty pleased. I'm pretty flipping pleased with that 5G connectivity. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments, uh, what is the 5G connectivity like where you live? Is it widespread? Are you guys suffering from it? Are you not able to enjoy 5G just yet? What would you do if you happen to have 5G? You know, and again, if you guys do happen to be subscribing and happen to be commenting, you will be entered into the giveaway for an Alcatel JoyTab 2 tablet. All you have to do again is comment and be subscribed. That's it. The moment I reach 750 subscribers, I will be picking one of those names out at random to receive one of these. And as always, thanks for watching.